sweat the technique. Got our special guest tonight, live and direct from the Boogie Down Bronx, the one and only DJ I Rock. What's good? What's good? What's good? DJ I Rock, AMW DJs. That's America's most wanted DJs. Shout out to my AMW DJs. That's Europe's most wanted DJs. We got that too. You know what I'm saying? Rolling with Alicia Keys. You know what I mean? Right now, um, basically like everybody else. You know, you hear music as you're growing up. And it starts off with you break dancing and you know dancing and you, every, yeah then you go with the rapping and you kind of whatever sticks to you you know beatboxing you kind of do everything as a kid then one you, you're better at one thing than everything else so me I wasn't good at none of them <laughs> so I played basketball you know what I mean and then just for fun I seen you know guys you know in the park with the turntables and everything so I just did it on the low you know and I just kind of got good myself but just as the love for it like anything else not to make money, you know, just not to go around the world, just to do it in my house and try to imitate the guys I heard on the radio. Like at that time, it was um, Funk Master Flex, Red Alert, Chuck Chill Out, those type of guys. Then you would, as a kid, I would go to the concert and see Jam Master J and um, dudes like Terminator X, you know, and DJ Scratch, you know, guys that really, really did it. And I just emulated what they did, Jazzy Jeff. Right, definitely Kid Capri. But I'm talking about before Kid Capri, as a kid, I seen no, yeah, yeah, Red Alert and, and Jam Master J at the um, Run DMC concert. So I mean, I was like nine, but my brothers took me to see him. So I kind of, I wanted to be, you know, do all of the tricks they did with the, you know, turntable. It was just fun, you know, it was just fun. Cash money. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of times, you know, you didn't have anybody to teach you. So I would listen to the records and hear how they did it and figure it out myself. Cause I didn't want to tell anybody I DJ. I thought they would laugh at me, you know what I mean? Everybody knew me for playing basketball. So that's what I did. And, and this leads us to another interesting issue that we were debating earlier at dinner. Um, how does the new technology throughout the years come into play as far as developing the skills and the way a DJ or slash turntablist uh, develops his skills? Because there's been an uh, evolution on that, especially. Well, I think it's like we was talking about at dinner, it's a gift and a curse. It, it's good, whereas I don't have to carry 20 crates of records with me no more, which used to pay like an extra $500, $600. Plus carry them, I have to work out no more. Yeah, right, and extra weights. <laughs> you can use your, your records as weights, you know what I mean? Work out in your room, but the easier, you know, with the laptop, it makes it better because, you know, it's easier, but computers crash. You know, hey, viruses, you got you know, a lot of money for a computer. So with that way, it's like the bad part. Also, with the new technology allows you to do it easier where you don't need as many skills. The computer mixes for you now. It matches the beats. It uh, basically does everything for you, but drive the car. You know what I mean? So with that being said, it's instant DJs, instant MCs, you know, and the skill level went out of it. But the ones who really want to get into it and have longevity will research and find out the foundation of whether it's rap, DJing. They still need that. Right, that's rap the foundation, right. First. In order to be longevity, you could have a one hit wonder or you could DJ a couple parties today, but in five, six years, you will, you, will you still be around? Right, that's what I've learned. And the guys who accept the technology and use it to their benefit, as well as the skills, combine them, are the guys who are going to stay in the game longest. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you brought up an interesting issue about the internet, how uh, it overlaps like geographical distances. And um, how important is it for a DJ to be able to bring his skills and his, his culture, his musical style to other countries? I mean, the World Wide Web is the World Wide. I mean, you can put out a song today and it'd be in Africa within a minute. Like, you can email it to everybody without money. You know, everything is basically free on the internet. So in that way, it's a benefit. But at the same time, if it's not good music, you're mail emailing it to a million people who are gonna hate your music now because, you know what I mean, it's just, it's instant music, you know what I'm saying? And basically the internet, you know, it's a good tool to use as far as like, perfect example, if you need it, I was on tour, I needed a couple of songs, one of my DJs emailed it to me. You know, before, if you had the records, that's all you had, that's all you had. You know, nobody's gonna share their records with you. 
Right, you have to get new resources. But I think it's not special anymore. Like, I used to have certain records that if you couldn't find it, you didn't have it. And when you found it, you bought three copies so you would have backup. Right. So, you know, with that being said, it kind of took the fun away from you no know, digging and looking for stuff because everybody has everything now. It's no more exclusive records. You know what I mean? It's less personalized, less custom. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so um, let's break it down about the uh, original uh, stuff you did with Big L and out there in Harlem and Boogie Down. Well, like I said, I played basketball, so I was in the Bronx, so between Bronx, Harlem is where I played a lot of basketball and went to the gambling spot, you know, one day with my friends from the Bronx, try to win some money. And when we get in there, you know, Big L was in there. They told me, oh, that's Big L, because he just, first song he had, it wasn't, like, he wasn't Big L yet, he just was Big L, you know, he had one single, it was getting a little radio play. And I was like, okay, that's what's up, I seen him. Didn't say anything. Went about three or four more times seeing him. Then I was like, nice record. You know, you got out. You know, we started talking a little bit. I told him I was DJ I Rock. He was, no, oh, yeah, I got a couple of your mixtapes. Maybe we could do something later on. And just by happen, I said, well, if you ever need a DJ, you know, to go on the road, let me know what's good. And he, and he said he had a DJ. So I wasn't, you know, really worried about it. Maybe. No, and about three weeks later, his manager called me. He's like, yo, El said he had a conversation with you. He's about to go on this tour and he wants you to be his DJ. And the rest is history. It's like, it's crazy how it happened. Don't sweat the technique. 